with this weight. Nikki, it's still there, but it's, is it doable? No? Okay. Um, so welcome, everyone. Great to see you all. Um, this is our um, our big final day. Um, uh, we have a big final night tonight, Ayub. Um, and um, the first part of this afternoon is what we call conversations. We had some of these programs there online, if you like to see them. A lot of talks about the future of authorship and the future of the literary sector. Um, they're on YouTube, on the Wintertime channel, if you want to reach out. Uh, um, I, can I, I can put on Slack where they are, or you just... Um, <laughs> or you <laughs> this is a running joke, eh? right? Um, and um, um, we talk about um, the changes we see in, in the European literary market, the changes we see in your profession uh, as artists, uh, writers as well as translators, as well as programmers and literary professionals. And today we have two topics. Um, and the first one um, is about the fundament. Um, so the circulation of books and the key position of the translator in this. And the second one, and also the threats opposed upon, also by the pandemic. And the second one is the future. So how do we see you as literary creators in the future? Well, which changes do we see? Um, and in between, we have a little break. We will speak about uh, 30 to 40 minutes uh, in each round. And I have a little announcement to make um, about what's going on outside. So outside, just on the left, when you go outside, you have two installations uh, made by uh, Maria Pavlovich and Ariana Georgia as part of the sto transmedia storytelling uh, um, course. Um, we don't have an official presentation. They are there. The writers are also here. Search them if you have any questions. They're, they're marvelous installations, and they're, uh, I think, a quite an example of what we can do uh, when it comes to um, thinking about uh, literary um, makership. So, um, in, my, um, in my book here, it says, I will repeat this before the break, so remind me of this. Um, we have a first round talking about translation mostly and about circulation of books, and we do this with uh, these marvelous, beautiful people. Let's first give them an applause before they introduce themselves. <laughs> so, can I start with you? I'm Helena from Slovenia, from uh, publishing house Goga, and I'm LP. Yeah, and a writer, right? And a writer. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Ilya Stevanovsky. I'm translator and interpreter from Serbia. Uh, I'm uh, Ilka Freun. I'm the uh, director of the International House of Literature, Passaporta in Brussels. Hi, I'm Michala. I'm from the Czech Literary Center, and I'm here as a PM within the Czech team. Okay, thank you. And my name is Frank, uh, and I'm the director of Wintertime from the Netherlands. And um, for each round, we ask two uh, uh, persons to feed us with questions. Um, I don't know who's the first, is it? Um, Arno. Arno. So we asked Arno Pasquale and Michel Hussensen. Uh, Michelle is a translator from English to Dutch, and Arno, sorry, from the way uh, other way around, sorry, <laughs> from Dutch to English, yeah, a very renowned translator, and um, and Arno Pasquale, who uh, is the officer um, concerned with the circulation of books and translation at the European Commission, and uh, maybe we can go to the first uh, video. Start to up, but, uh, <laughs> yes, Hello, my name is the European Commission for the Creative Europe program where I follow the book sector. Uh, one of our main objectives at Creative Europe is to uh, give support to the culture and creative sectors, to give support to European artists, European professionals and European organizations to collaborate across border. And for European content, 
uh, European books, films, theatre plays to be able to circulate across border in Europe and beyond. But you all know that without translation, there is no circulation uh, of books, no circulation of films or, or theatre plays. Translation and translators are a key pillar of um, our cultural diversity in Europe. Yet the profession has become not so attractive, and it's, this is mainly due to poor, remun poor remuneration uh, of your works as a translator. That is why, together with a group of EU experts coming from 20 countries, we have um, uh, uh, published a report that gives a recommendation on how to uh, reinforce the translation sectors and how to increase the, uh, your, the circulation of European books uh, in Europe and beyond. And one of the key messages is, of course, that uh, the remuneration of translators should be increased, uh, that uh, translators should be better trained, should be better organized collectively, and should have more visibility uh, for their work. Hence, the title of their of, the, of our report, Translators Undercover, as a metaphor of our main message. Uh, of course, public funders have a responsibility to help the book sectors to achieve and to provide fair remuneration to writers and translators. And that's why we call for more fundings being available to publishers, more funding being available to uh, uh, booksellers so that they can promote books uh, and give uh, uh, and lead uh, uh, readers to those books. Um, for instance, uh, at uh, Creative Europe, we have increased our funding for translation. We have uh, put uh, fair remuneration as a key condition uh, to have access to our grants to translation. Um, we also promote cooperation and collaboration between publishers and booksellers. And we have uh, um, continue our price uh, for the European Union, European Union Prize for Literature. Uh, this price is a recognition uh, uh, to the uh, creativity in Europe uh, and to the diversity of uh, the linguistic diversity uh, of, uh, uh, of the li uh, literary sector. Uh, no doubt that you will discuss those issues uh, in the different sessions of uh, the uh, CELA uh, uh, week uh, and, uh, and probably in the next session of, the, um, uh, uh, of this uh, panel. Uh, but uh, in the meantime, uh, I would like to congratulate you to be part of the CELA community and to have uh, taken the uh, initiatives to, 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 to join this training program. Uh, and I would like to wish you the best of luck for your career. Bye-bye. Hi, uh, my name is Michelle Hutchison. Um, one of the big changes across my career as a translator has been from being um, an invisible part of the process, um, like an editor or a, jack or a jacket designer, to becoming a more visible one. Um, Translators, of course, are lobbying now, have their names on the jacket to get paid royalties. Um, and as we've become more visible, we've been asked to become co-promoters of the books. So I find myself doing a lot of events or getting involved in discussions about literature and foreign languages. Um, my job has also become more political. I'm expected to have opinions on issues like representation and identity politics. And I, sometimes I find it very hard to know exactly what to say. Um, my question to you is, how can we prepare ourselves as translators for these new ch challenges? How can we become uh, more public figures and uh, learn to leave behind the safety of our, uh, of our own homes and our, and our bedrooms or um, our, our desks where we translate? Quite clear questions before we de dive deeper into them. Uh, they both talk about changes, uh, changes when it comes to the profession, changes when it comes to attracting an audience, changes to in the circulation of books. Ilke, what kind of change do you encounter uh, as a festival organizer? 
Uh, we had to do our previous festival online, so we'll see what it, the next one in March 23 uh, will look like. But in the meantime, we do a lot of events with writers on stage, and we see that um, the audience uh, is, is there. They're really enthusiastic to come to uh, renowned uh, authors, uh, but they book a lot later than they did before. So it's always a bit nervous from our uh, side, organizer's side, how it will work out, but mostly it works out quite well. And we see there's a great enthusiasm to uh, come and attend events that are on, on more uh, cultural, social topics. So there's, there's, I think, at least for a part of the audience, or the, the audience that we cater for, really a great enthusiasm to reflect more on the world we are living in. And uh, Ilya, how is this for you? Do you encounter changes, as Michelle also said? And well, definitely, yeah. yes. I think that uh, the translation business and publishing business is really advancing, mm -hmm. and uh, especially now with different changes that we're experiencing at the moment. So I think that really we as translators also need to advance and to work a lot more uh, to promote our own work and mm -hmm. to come out. On the, on the other side, you know, translators like to be invisible, especially when it comes to their work. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you, your voice as translator cannot be seen, which is what the theory says. But I think that on the other hand, we as translators need to work more to promote our own work, mm -hmm. to promote what we've done, to promote the literature, the authors. Uh, and I think that it's something that is not happening. It's no. beginning to advance now, but it's a steadily advance. No. And I think that we all, as a collective, we, we need to do more. Uh, Michala, we are talking this week a lot about this position of the translator and these changes. Are you able, um, as a literary center, you're, you're from the Czech Literary Center, are you able to guide translators as you can guide your writers? Or is there a difference for you? Well, it's a little bit complicated for me. Uh, in the Czech Republic, the uh, association of uh, translators, so we were thinking maybe is a role more for the association to uh, gather to translators and offer them education, but actually they do not have so much money. So we decided also because of the SILA project to step in more actively as a literary institution having the budget. And we were transformed a little bit thanks to the SILA, our own offers, what do we offer? And we are trying to um, put the translators the chance to speak on the event, to organize more debates about the remuneration topics, about the contracts, and we are seeing that the audience is quite high, um, so there is this need to talk about it in public, there is this need to change the, um, the remuneration things and all the fees and all the contracts towards the changing times. So, uh, what do we do with the audiobooks? There are so many changing topics, uh, also for the translators, and the rights um, uh, with all these different podcasts and, and audios, but still based on theatre, based on the literary translations, that it needs to be uh, addressed right now. And I have a, a nice example. No, we do offer residencies for foreign uh, translators who do translate from the Czech language into their mother tongue. And normally, they just required a quiet place they can work. And they were asking to have a bed and a desk and maybe Wi-Fi. And now they are asking, do we have an event? Do you organize something for us? Can we talk in public? Can we meet students at your university? So I do see a change. That's a big change also in the state, the, the translator sees for him or herself. In Slovenia, you also organize a festival and you have a residency. Um, do you uh, organize encounters of translators with the audience? Uh, actually, we also have a great as association for uh, translators, mm. so uh, they mainly organize events for the translators, but in Slovenia, is, um, we, have a little, uh, we have a great fund funding for uh, translators who already have published one or two books. For young translators, is quite different. Uh, you have to translate something before you you can get funding. So it's a uh, it's a great gap between young translators and um, older ones. There's a big gap. That's, that's a, and a bottleneck maybe as well. Um, I would like, and uh, this is a question to you all. If you want to step in, um, you're a bit dark for us, right? So we can't <laughs> see you. Just start. Just start talking, right? So uh, um, get involved. 
I want to go to the question Michelle posed upon on you guys, uh, translators, for instance, or more foremost. Um, she said, how to get out, out of the safety of our homes and to become more visible. Um, do you have thoughts on this as, as a translator? Yes, of course. Well, we talked about it a lot. Mm -hmm. the, the first idea was to get translation, tr translators mentioned in the books as translators. Mm -hmm. And uh, especially, it, could, it would be great if we could put the names of the translators on the book covers because that way I think that's the first step to getting translators more visible, mm -hmm. but as well uh, including the translators as well, what Mikhaila said, uh, in promotion of the books, in promotion of the authors uh, of, the, of those translators, mm -hmm. uh, promoting of the literature or the country, as well participating in different events, festivals. I think that in Serbia, for example, uh, there is some events, but uh, we could see a lot more of that, yeah. especially in the future. There is. As, uh, as Michel said, visibility is one issue. Uh, translation yes. on the cover is, is, is one, one thing to, to, to uh, establish this. But is there more, maybe? Is it only about visibility? There are things that Michel addressed, I think, the role and the position of the translator. Yes, of course, as well. Uh, the contracts and paying royalties, uh, that's also also important an important thing, because, for example, in Serbia, you, you usually, when you sign a contract for a translation, you, use a, you usually concede the rights to the publishing house. Yeah. So the publishing house has all the rights to reprint or to sell those rights to mm -hmm. some other publishing house and you as a translator don't have any say in that, mm -hmm. which is completely wrong. Uh, and that's the general practice. Maybe there is some advance, uh, not that I'm aware of, but also I think it's very important that, translate, uh, that translators should be paid their royalties and uh, they should have the rights yeah. to also to decide is there going to be a reprint? Uh, could the license be set, sold to other publishing houses or to more publishing mm. houses as well? That's also, also important for, for the visibility yeah. of the translator. Ilka? I think uh, what we're doing here at CELA is talking about uh, connecting emerging literary artists. So th this already says a lot, I think. We don't talk about writers and translators or writers and translators and professionals. We just look at them as uh, literary artists, and I think from my point of view, which is more the creative point of view, not the commercial side, but because both sides are really important when you talk about writing or translation, translating. Uh, it, to me, it's, it, that's, that's, that's a sort of guiding star. If you have that concept and you start from that concept, then everything that accounts for writers would, would ideally also account for translators. It would mean, though, that the, um, the capacities or skills of a translator are also changing. Um, and do we have, as organizations, do we have the skills for this to, um, to, to, uh, to make that sustainable? Michala, is that something that you think about at the checklist? Yeah, but it's um, evolving. We are trying to, uh, to provide the translators the right skills. Mm -hmm. Uh, because we see there was a shift. Translators were usually on the stage as uh, translators for the author. They were used to it. We are trying to put them uh, next to the author, to be equal with the author, but then uh, they lack uh, the experience to be on the stage. They lack uh, the confidence. Sometimes they, they feel forced to do so. And I think that what you can't learn within the school system or educational system, but you need somehow to get a lifelong learning process on all the skills you need. Um, and it's quite hard within my own system to be as flexible to provide this. So we need a little bit to reinvent our budget as well and the systematic changes uh, are needed also from institutions like I am because it was not the case. Uh, 10 years ago that you put translator and author on a stage talking uh, as a partner. It was more the role, okay, you are the translator, so translate the debate for us. Do you, do you recognize this, this need for, for different uh, co competences, as, as you could say, uh, as a translator or as a literary professional? Definitely. And how do you think um, we should um, make this possible? 
And where would the responsibility be? There are, for instance, no creative writing programs for translators yes. as there are for, for writers. Yes, I think that's that's one of the one of the way to do so. Mm. And I think that uh, a part of the responsibility lies on the translators themselves mm. to uh, be uh, constantly improving alone, especially in these times when there are different mediums to present the translations, mm. translations such as audiobooks or I don't know podcasts or translator translations in writings but also um, the, the uh, literary organizations also could provide or could help uh, in getting those no knowledges and know-hows mm -hmm. to, to translators. I think that we all need to work together and you know to prepare translation as uh, as a product we also need to work all together and to um, to join all of our uh, skills mm -hmm. in order to make that a complete product and I think we need to do that with uh, different skills and with mm -hmm. different skills and knowledge that all of us have not just writers or translators only mm -hmm. or literary agents I think that it has to be a process within everyone so I think that translators need to improve by themselves but also with different programs for creative writing for uh, also translating mm -hmm. for uh, I don't know uh, also technical advancement as well <laughs> no, I have just an example. We yeah. have this uh, Faces of Northern, so all the Northern language translators, they got together and they decided they will learn themselves from each other. So they organized from themselves like mentoring courses, uh, poetry courses, performative art courses. And uh, now they developed uh, big, huge European projects and they got the money. So I think this is what we need as institution to see that there is this potential, they are willing to work. It's an extra job for them, for all of them. They are doing in the free time. And then if I see this energy there, then I can support it because I know the programs are functioning and what they need is just money, which is the easiest thing to get. But what we need <laughs> is, but what you need first are the people willing to do the job and to take the responsibility yeah. for themselves. Yeah. But as we hear, the, the translators want, uh, I think, <laughs> It's a, when we, we use this afternoon to, to make some kind of utopia, you know, I think we have this as a marvelous <laughs> example. Uh, Ilke? I just wanted to say that it's very much um, an ecosystem, so absolutely everyone just has to chip in and play their parts. Uh, and the, at, the, at, the, at the basis is the mind shift, and I think that for me in Sela, this mind shift is represented already. And ideally, we'll just sort of also play a role in... in, in, in um, helping the, the whole ecosystem or the other uh, because we're all part of our own national ecosystems as well or, or literary ecosystems as well so to to um help us to everyone around us to work in the same uh framework and have the same mind shift as well this this mind shift is the is the shift from looking at uh, um, at the literary system as, as something created uh, um, uh, by a market authors, translators, and all separated. We, we see them as literary artists within SILA, also the LPs, uh, also the, the translators. How is this for you to be seen as a, you, you have to be on stage. Um, as Michelle said, you're, you're part of a debate on identity or on other things, uh, depending on the book that you translate. How is this shift for you? This is something that asks for a new position in in the market? A little bit uncomfortable. <laughs> uh, uh, because we are used to be at the backstage. Mm. Um, but yeah, refreshing. Uh, because um, you have to put yourself in the shoes of writer, translator, mm. of organizer, or the, the director. Mm. And somehow it's LP role in all this as I see it. Mm to uh, to organize or um, mediate between all of them. Mm -hmm. So it's a tricky one. For a translator as well? Uh, a bit yes, yeah. a bit yes as well, but I think that we, we, we could do that. Yeah. <laughs> I think that it, it requires a lot of effort from everyone, but I think that in order for the greater good, you mm -hmm. know, I think that uh, everyone can do uh, a little, uh, I don't know, an hour or half an hour stage 
uh, performance in order to, for example, present mm -hmm. their own work or work together, I think mm -hmm. it's not much. Okay. We, we were talking this week about the future of CLA, of course, and uh, one of the topics that we addressed was the choice of text. So now the text was chosen by the, by the writer, uh, and the writers were chosen by the organizations, and we thought, why not let the translators be the curators of, the, of CELA? How would you see this? Um. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is all, I, I think that's also very important because if, if a translator has also a say in choosing what to do, uh, I think translator, translators can be a lot more motivated to, to perform better mm -hmm. and to do better translator, translations and then to work also mm -hmm. better in order to promote and then to get it published and you know to work for their own good and as well for the good of everyone else. Yeah. So I think that's also also very important. But uh, also you have to uh, leave some space to the editors or because in Slovenia translators um, often um, go to the editors and uh, pitch the texts. Mm. And uh, I think that editor ha have a right to choose their own text and give it to the translators. Of course, which happens yeah. all the time and you only get the text that you should translate and you cannot do any anything about it. Mm -hmm. well, but yeah, if, you, if, you, if your role in, in the debate, for instance, is inc increasing, your visibility is increasing, then your cur curatorship is also increasing. I think you're more responsible. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, you have more responsibility. That's what you call a little bit. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. And I think it's an interesting thing that a writer is building an oeuvre, or might be, mm -hmm. and a translator a portfolio. So it's, it's a wonderful thing that as a translator, that's an ideal world, of course, that you really have to, you can decide for yourself and you can choose the, the kind of writing you like and that speaks to you and that you're really comfortable or yes. good at translating. Yes, of course, and it works for specialization as well. Mm -hmm. If someone likes to specialize, for example, in fiction or not fi fiction translating, for example. Yes. Yeah. So we're talking about an ideal world. Uh, which is almost there, um, <laughs> but we need some things for this. Innovations, I think, mind, uh, shifting of minds, of course, and, and, and rephrasing uh, what, a, what, a, what, a, what authorship is, maybe. Uh, what kind of innovations um, are you working on, Ilke, in, in Brussels, uh, Passaporte? A very uh, intimate one. Mm. Um, we've been we've been reflecting on how we wanted to transform digitally, and one of the uh, one of the things that came up was that we really have to know what kind of audience you're working for. Uh, and so we, we, we were ref reflecting on this now. And one of the things that we thought was we really want to be closer to our audience, but also to our writers. And so we decided, and this also as an effect of the pandemic, that we sort of that we should open up the uh, office space in our house of literature and share it with writers, translators, like it's the broad definition, like uh, it's a co-writing space for translators, writers, uh, all kinds of literary artists, um, because it's just this informal element uh, that, 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 is, that is something that we missed during the pandemic uh, and that is uh, it's, it's really important just to meet other, uh, to meet the writers that you're working for, the translators you're working for, and for them to meet each other as well. So, so instead of the big digital transformation, we'll come there at the same time, but we're now focusing on the small human uh, element, namely just working next to each other and having a coffee uh, and having lunch together. So this is for us a new, a new step. A big innovation for an organization, I think. Yeah. The word is now on the table, pandemic, for those who don't know. It was a two-year period, not so long ago, in which we didn't meet. Um, it brought upon positive changes, as you could see. How was this for you, Michala? Did you, did you encounter, of course, you encountered difficulties in the pandemic, but did it also brought changes that you would say, I, I will stick to this? It brought some changes for us towards the translators. We were able to use the new channels like podcasts and blogs mm. for them to be more visible, to tell us what they, how do they spend the day, and they made photos of their tables, mm -hmm. and we published it. So we uh, are going small as well, trying to uh, provide this insight into their daily life, which is totally interesting, I mean, for the wider public. So, and we will keep it also uh, after the, or we kept it after the pandemic. And I think it's important or to film videos with the experienced one 
who uh, can share their experience and we put it then on the channel of the universities. We are trying to make an archive of old experienced translators who share online their knowledge. So um, this is what we did for translators within the pandemic situation. And uh, did you encounter anything that, that you would say, this is something that, that really brought me so something? Uh, well, I think also the entering to, into the digital space was, mm -hmm. was uh, also a positive thing. And, uh, you know, working in, in digital sphere uh, mm -hmm. is something that, that was really important because I think that uh, literature should get into different media, mm -hmm. di through different mediums. Uh, so I think that was a good thing. I think also many people turned to, to books and to reading as well. But on the other, on the other side, uh, many of the translators simply lost their work because everything stopped when, yeah. when the lockdowns began. Yeah. So it was a bit positive and a bit negative change, mm -hmm. depending, on, depending on, the, on the point of view and yeah. depending on the area. And, and for you, as a literary professional in Slovenia? As a literary professional, uh, yeah, it has stopped. Yeah. For, for events. And or as a writer, because you're also a writer. As a writer, uh, you have uh, you had more time to, mm. to write. So yeah. that was uh, I. I see this period as a preparation time for mm. uh, for this time now. Yeah. Um, yeah, time mostly. So little pandemics every once in a while. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is something to learn of? Also, inviting people to work in your room. I think we have some. Some nice, intimate solutions and, and proposals here. Um, are there any questions from you guys to, to, the, to this marvelous panel? Or anything that you would like to remark upon what is being said? Yes? Yeah. They needed to start my association, this uh, group I was talking about, they really started to uh, work together and they uh, decided as a whole bunch of uh, this northern countries translators mm -hmm. that they will set up a prize for them, for the whole group of them and they discussed it with all the publishing houses. So there is the strength in the group in this cooperation, they did now a uh, uh, whole, I don't know, moral codex for them that nobody from the group will go beneath this uh, price. The price issue is quite complicated in the Czech Republic. You can still get offers from the publishing houses to translate a standard page for three euros, which uh, is really not worth uh, anything. Uh, so they decided we don't do it, but they needed to decide it as a group. Mm. And this is the strength in you all to get connected and to stand for your language you do translate from or into and uh, make from it a collective deal because as individuals you can hardly argue with a publishing house. Then the publishing house say, okay, you don't want to do it for three euros, then I will pick up another uh, translator. But if you stand as a collective, and then they decided, okay, we want to do some more uh, workshops. We need to develop our skills. So we will ask the Creative Europe and we will write a project and we will get money from the European Union. That's what I think, the money is there. The, the, the money is in the European system, in the national system. There are grants, possibilities, but you need to have a collective uh, that is working together, collaborating, it doesn't have to be uh, 100 people. Uh, this group of mine started also really small, but now they are doing videos. They started really with uh, small campaigns on Facebook. Mm -hmm. How, what is your experience with the publishing houses? Share this with us. And they started really from like talks, what we are doing the whole days here within yeah. the CELA. as a literary organizer or 
uh, how to literature invite people on stage and be famous, of course. And it doesn't really matter if they're a writer or translator, they're creative people on stage that you, you have to do. So that's, if the role changes, mm. that everything else has to change with that. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I was yeah. talking, I don't know with whom, Monica from my translator, yeah. she was invited now to the book fair to uh, talk about her translation of an Italian author to mm. the Czech, and she wasn't uh, offered any fee. Yeah, yeah. Then, mm. okay, then this is the chance. You need to stand up and say, I won't do it. It's my book, it's my translation. You ask me to moderate the event. Mm -hmm. I have the skills, I have the expertise. There is nobody else that could do it. I know the author and I need some fee. But if you don't tell so, Nobody will offer to you, not within the system. Mm -hmm. But can I add something? Because as a writer, I don't want my work that when it's translated to be a setup, when a certain translator is to attend it, and people want to come to the table, so it's not a problem. So yeah, the fact that it could also be not only responsibility. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes, yeah. This is what Sila is about, I think, yeah. and I, 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 I think this is a, this is an invitation that Lisa just did, right? And uh, and also, um, we have to invite each other for these for these things, I think. And it's also um, it's also it's about money and visibility. But when we have this conversation, we see it's about a lot more, um, and we, we cannot do this alone. Uh, the, you as a translator know this. Um, so I, I really like the the. The, the initiative that Michala puts on the table and the invitation by Lisa. Um, <laughs> you know where to find her. Um, and there are more writers here. So I would really like to encourage this. As if this would be an outcome of this week, then it's already a success, right? Yeah. All right, I think I'm looking at Fleur. I have to round up this round, right? So before I round this up, I have an important um, announcement. Just outside this room, <laughs> On your left, you have two installations made by, and this is also a cooperation with an artist. And let's not forget uh, uh, Marianne Hommerson from the Buren, who traveled all the way by train uh, to Madrid with a dollhouse in her luggage, <laughs> which is actually true. Um, um, they were, um, they were um, uh, um, following a course of transmedia storytelling um, by Marty Smits and Corinne Heijerman. Um, which are Dutch and Flemish um, writers and transmedia artists. Um, and the installations are here by Ma Maria and Ariana. And uh, don't miss it. I, this is in bold. Don't miss it. <laughs> Check it out. Yeah. And I will repeat this announcement again at the end of the next round. Um, we will have a five minute break and we will talk about the future. Okay. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, guys. Yeah.